These videos are to be a journey through the Bible. It's all about worship and to whom you worship, is the name of the seven volume video series, and I pray that you have listened to them from the first video of the beginning of creation up to now, which will be the first census of the children of Israel. The playlist is available on Alive in Jesus Audio YouTube channel. The first five books of the Old Testament are really a five book history of God's plan for mankind. Therefore, these videos are consistent teachings of the Old Testament scriptures from the beginning. If you have listened to the start of this series, I want to thank you. Not many Christians today believe that the Old Testament is relevant for today, but every word of God is relevant, and the Old Testament speak of the New Testament. That being said, we will continue on our journey through the Bible. We have now arrived at the next biggest part of God's plan for the nation of Israel. During our journey through the Bible, on the outside looking in, we have been in the Garden of Eden, seen his plan of creation, and all that he created. We were looking in from the outside, and saw that God created our first parents, Adam and Eve, to whom he had a personal relationship with them until they were disobedient. Our journey also took us to the reason why God brought the great flood upon the earth, and saving only Noah and his family. Our journey took us to see that it was Noah's sons who repopulated the world after the flood, and then, because they were disobedient too, God dispersed them all over the world from the Tower of Babel. Further in our journey we were introduced to Abraham, who was born into the family line of Shem. He became the first patriot chosen by God to continue his plan for mankind. This is where it began. We saw how the Lord God made a covenant with Abraham and his descendants after him. His descendants, the families of Isaac, then Jacob, Isaac's son were also chosen to be patriots. But it was Jacob's generation, of his twelve sons who were slaves in Egypt. From the outside looking in, we saw how the Lord God delivered them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and their multiple gods. We saw how the Lord God brought the children of Jacob, or Israel, out of Egypt with a mighty hand, with an outstretched arm, with great terror, and with signs and wonders. He fought against all the gods of Egypt and executed judgment on them, and then he used Moses to bring the children of Israel out of that land. Now our journey will take us to the separation into groups of the children of Israel. We will see now how the children of Israel will become the twelve tribes of Israel through a census being taken. All this being said, let us continue on our journey. Moses and the children of Israel are still in the wilderness of Mount Sinai. Now, the promise of the covenant the Lord made with Abraham and his descendants came to pass. When Abraham was ninety years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am Almighty God, walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you and will multiply you exceedingly. As for me, my covenant is with you, and you will be a father of many nations, for I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings will come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you in their generations, for an everlasting covenant, to be God to you and your descendants after you. Now, all the persons of the house of Jacob who went to Egypt were seventy, for Joseph was already in Egypt. The children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly, multiplied, and grew exceedingly mighty, and the land was filled with them. Now the Lord brought the children of Israel out of slavery and the Lord has brought them to the wilderness of Sinai. In the tabernacle of meeting, on the first day of the second month, in the second year after Israel had come out of the land of Egypt, the Lord spoke to Moses and commanded him to take a census of all the congregation of the children of Israel, by their families, by their fathers' houses, according to the number of names of every male individually, from twenty years old and above all who were able to go to war in Israel. Moses and Aaron were to number them by their armies. With them, there was to be a man from every tribe, each one the head of his father's house. The leaders were chosen from the congregation. These were leaders of their father's tribes, heads of the division in Israel. Moses and Aaron took these men, and they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month, 
and they recited their ancestry by families, by their fathers' houses, according to the number of names, from twenty years old and above, each one individually. As the Lord commanded Moses, so he numbered them in the wilderness of Sinai. The children of Reuben, Israel's oldest son, their genealogies by their families, by their father's house, according to the number of names, every male individually from twenty years old and above, all who were able to go to war, those who were numbered of the tribe of Reuben were forty-six thousand five hundred, and their leader is Eliezer. The tribe of Simeon was fifty-nine thousand three hundred, and Shalomiel is their leader. The tribe of Gad was forty-five thousand six hundred and fifty, and Eliasaph is their leader. The tribe of Judah was seventy-four thousand six hundred, and their leader is Nashon. The tribe of Issachar was fifty-four thousand four hundred, and their leader is Nethanel. The tribe of Zebulun was fifty-seven thousand four hundred, and their leader is Eliab. The tribe of Joseph's younger son is Ephraim, and their tribe was counted. Ephraim's tribe was forty thousand five hundred, and their leader is Elishama. The tribe of Joseph's oldest son Manasseh was thirty two thousand two hundred, and their leader is Gamaliel. The tribe of Benjamin was thirty five thousand four hundred, and their leader is Abidan. The tribe of Dan was sixty two thousand seven hundred, and their leader is Azer. The tribe of Asher was forty one thousand five hundred, and their leader is Pagiel. The tribe of Naphtali was 53,400, and their leader is Ahira. These twelve men Moses and Aaron numbered with the leaders of Israel, each representing his father's house. All who were numbered of the children of Israel, by their father's houses, from twenty years old and above, all who were able to go to war in Israel were 603,550. The Levites were not numbered among them by their father's tribe, for the Lord God spoke to Moses saying, Only the tribe of Levi you will not number, nor take a census of them among the children of Israel, but you will appoint the Levites over the tabernacle of the testimony, over all its furnishings, and over all things that belong to it, they will carry the tabernacle and all its furnishings, they will attend to it and camp around the tabernacle. When the tabernacle is to be set up, the Levites will set it up. The outsider, non-Levite who comes near will be put to death. The children of Israel will pitch their tents, everyone by his own camp, everyone by his own standard, according to their armies, but the Levites will camp around the tabernacle of the testimony, that there may be no wrath on the congregation of the children of Israel, and the Levites will keep charge of the tabernacle of the testimony. The children of Israel did according to all that the Lord commanded Moses. Every one of the children of Israel was to camp by his own standard beside the emblems of his father's house, they were to camp some distance from the tabernacle of meeting. The following are the placements of the Israelite tribes at the campsite, on the east side, toward the rising of the sun, those of the standard of the forces with Judah, were to camp according to their armies, and Nashon, was the leader. The tribe of Issachar camped next to Judah, and Nethanel, was the leader. Then the tribe of Zebulun came, and Eliab was the leader. All who were numbered according to their armies of the forces with Judah were 186,400. These were to break camp first. On the south side would be the standard of the forces with Reuben, according to their armies, and the leader of the children of Reuben is Eliezer. Those who camped next to Reuben were the tribe of Simeon, and the leader of the children of Simeon was Shalomiel. Then the tribe of Gad came, and the leader of the children of Gad was Eliasaf, the son of Ruel. All who were numbered according to their armies of the forces with Reuben were 151,450, and they were the second to break camp. The tabernacle of meeting was to move out with the camp of the Levites in the middle of the camps, as they camp, so they would move out, everyone in his place, by their standards. On the west side was the standard of the forces with Ephraim, according to their armies, and the leader of the children of Ephraim was Elishama. Next to Ephraim, the tribe of Manasseh came, and the leader of the children of Manasseh was Gamaliel. Then the tribe of Benjamin came, and the leader of the children of Benjamin was Abidan. 
All who were numbered according to their armies of the forces with Ephraim were 108,100, and they were the third to break camp. Last, on the north side was the standard of the forces with Dan, according to their armies, and the leader of the children of Dan was Azer. Those who camped next to Dan were the tribe of Asher, and the leader of the children of Asher was Pagiel. Then the tribe of Naphtali came, and the leader of the children of Naphtali was Ahira. All who were numbered of the forces with Dan were 157,600, and they were to break camp last with their standards. These are the ones numbered of the children of Israel by their fathers' houses. All who were numbered according to their armies of the forces total 603,550. The Levites were not numbered among the children of Israel just as the Lord commanded Moses. These are the records of Aaron and Moses when the Lord spoke with Moses on Mount Sinai. The name of Aaron's sons was Nadab, the firstborn, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. These were the names of the sons of Aaron, the anointed priests, whom he consecrated to minister as priests. Nadab and Abihu had died before the Lord when they offered profane fire before the Lord in the wilderness of Sinai, and they had no children. They each took his censer and put fire in it, put incense on it, and offered profane fire before the Lord, which the Lord had not commanded them. So, fire went out from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. They did not regard the Lord as holy, and they did not glorify him before the people, then, fire went out from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. Only Aaron's two sons Eleazar and Ithamar ministered as priests in the presence of Aaron their father. The tribe of Levi was brought near and presented before Aaron the priest that they may serve him. They were to attend to his needs and the needs of the whole congregation before the tabernacle of meeting, to do the work of the tabernacle. They were also to attend to all the furnishings of the tabernacle of meeting, and to the needs of the children of Israel, to do the work of the tabernacle. The Levites were given entirely to Aaron and his sons from among the children of Israel, to do the work of the tabernacle. Aaron and his sons attended to their priesthood, but the outsider who came near, that is, a non-Levite, would be put to death. The Lord himself had taken the Levites from among the children of Israel instead of every firstborn who opened the womb among the children of Israel. Therefore, the Levites were to be his. Next, the Lord commanded Moses to number the children of Levi by their fathers' houses and by their families, every male from a month old and above, and he numbered them according to the word of the Lord. Now these were the sons of Levi, Gershon, Kohat, and Merari, and these are their sons by their families, Gershon's sons were Libni and Shimei, and from him came the family of the Libnites and the Shimites. These were the families of the Gershonites. Those who were numbered according to the number of all the males, from a month old and above of these who were numbered there, were 7,500. The families of the Gershonites were to camp behind the tabernacle westward. The leader of the father's house of the Gershonites was Eliasaph, the son of Lael. Their duties in the tabernacle of meeting included the tabernacle, the tent with its covering, the screen for the door of the court, the hangings of the court that are around the tabernacle and the altar, and their cords according to all the work relating to them. Kohat Now Kohat's sons were Amram, Izahar, Hebron, and Utziel. From Kohat came the family of the Amramites, the Azarites, the Hebronites, and the Utzilites, these were the families of the Kohathites. According to the number of all the males from a month old and above, there were 8,600 keeping charge of the sanctuary. The families of the children of Kohat were to camp on the south side of the tabernacle. Also, the leader of the father's house of the families of the Kohathites was Elizaphan, the son of Utziel. Their duty included the ark, the utensils of the sanctuary with which they ministered, the screen, and all the work relating to them. Eleazar the son of Aaron the priest was to be chief over the leaders of the Levites, with oversight of those who kept charge of the sanctuary. Those who were to camp before the tabernacle on the east, before the tabernacle of meeting, were Moses, Aaron, and his sons, keeping charge of the sanctuary, to meet the needs of the children of Israel, and if an outsider came near, he would be put to death. Merari 
Mareri's sons were Mali and Mushi. These were the families of the Levites by their fathers' houses. From Mareri came the family of the Malites and the Mushites. These were the families of Mareri. The number of all the males from a month old and above were 6,200. The leader of their father's house of the families of Mareri was Zuriel the son of Abihail. These were to camp on the north side of the tabernacle. The appointed duty of the children of Mareri included the boards of the tabernacle, its bars, its pillars, its sockets, its utensils, and all the work relating to them, and the pillars of the court relating to them, and the pillars of the court all around, with their sockets, pegs, and cords. All who were numbered of the Levites, whom Moses and Aaron numbered at the commandment of the Lord, by their families, all the males from a month old and above, were given as twenty-two thousand. The Lord commanded Moses and Aaron to take a census of each of the sons of Levi among the children of Levi by their families and by their father's house, from thirty years old and above even to fifty years old, all who enter the service to do work in the tabernacle of meeting. Moses and Aaron and the leaders of the congregation numbered the sons of the Kohathites by their families and by their father's house, from thirty years old and above, even to fifty years old, everyone who entered the service for work in the tabernacle of meeting, and those who were numbered by their families were two thousand seven hundred and fifty. These were the ones who were numbered of the families of the Kohathites, all who might serve in the tabernacle of meeting, whom Moses and Aaron numbered according to the commandment of the Lord by the hand of Moses. The service of the sons of Kohat in the tabernacle of meeting was related to the most holy things. When the camp prepared to journey, Aaron and his sons would come and take down the covering veil and cover the Ark of the Testimony with it. They would then put on it a covering of badger skins and spread over that a cloth entirely of blue, and would insert its poles. On the table of showbread, they would spread a blue cloth, and put on it the dishes, the pans, the bowls, and the pitchers for pouring, and the showbread would be on it. They would spread over them a scarlet cloth and cover the same with a covering of badger skins, and they would insert its poles. They would then take a blue cloth and cover the lampstand of the light, and all its oil vessels, with which they service it. Then they would put it with all its utensils in a covering of badger skins and put it on a carrying beam. Aaron and his sons would also take away the ashes from the altar and spread a purple cloth over it. They would put on it all its implements with which they minister there, the fire pans, forks, shovels, the basins, and all the utensils of the altar, and they would spread on it a covering of badger skins and insert its poles. It is when Aaron and his sons had finished covering the sanctuary and all the furnishings of the sanctuary, when the camp was set to go, then the sons of Kohat would come to carry them, but they were not to touch any holy thing, lest they die. These were the things in the tabernacle of meeting which the sons of Kohat were to carry. The appointed duty of Eleazar the son of Aaron the priest was the oil for the light, the sweet incense, the daily grain offering, the anointing oil, the oversight of all the tabernacle, of all that is in it, with the sanctuary and its furnishings. Then the Lord told Moses not to cut off the tribe of the families of the Kohathites from among the Levites, but to do this concerning them, that they may live and not die when they approach the most holy things, Aaron and his sons would go in and appoint each of them to his service and his task. However, they were not to go in to watch while the holy things were being covered, lest they die. Next, a census was taken of the sons of Gershon, by their families from thirty years old and above, even to fifty years old. And they were numbered, all who entered to perform the service, to do the work in the tabernacle of meeting. Those of the families of the sons of Gershon, by their families and by their father's house, from thirty years old and above even to fifty years old, everyone who entered the service to work in the tabernacle of meeting, those who were numbered were 2,630. These were the ones who were numbered of the families of the sons of Gershon, all who were numbered according to the commandment of the Lord. This was the service of the families of the Gershonites, in serving and carrying. They were to carry the curtains of the tabernacle of meeting with its covering, the covering of badger skins that is on it, the screen for the door of the tabernacle of meeting, the screen for the door of the gate of the court, the hangings of the court which are around the tabernacle and altar, and their cords, 
all the furnishings for their service and all that is made for these things, they were to serve. Aaron and his sons would assign all the service of the sons of Gershonites, all their tasks and all their service. Aaron and his sons were to appoint to them all their tasks and their duty. This was the service of the families of the sons of Gershon in the tabernacle of meeting. Their duties were to be under the authority of Ithamar the son of Aaron the priest. Next, a census was taken of the sons of Merari, and they were numbered by their families and by their father's house. They were numbered from thirty years old and above, even to fifty years old they were numbered, everyone who enters the service to do the work of the tabernacle of meeting. Those of the families of the sons of Merari, who were numbered by their families and by their father's house from thirty years old and above, even to fifty years old, everyone who entered the service for work in the tabernacle of meeting, those who were numbered were three thousand two hundred. These were the sons who were numbered of the families of the sons of Merari, whom Moses and Aaron numbered according to the word of the Lord by the hand of Moses. This was what they had to carry as all their service for the tabernacle of meeting, the boards of the tabernacle, its bars, its pillars, its sockets, and the pillars around the court with their sockets, pegs, and cords, with all their furnishings and all their service, and they were to assign to each man by name the items he must carry. This was the service of the families of the sons of Merari, as all their service for the tabernacle of meeting, under the authority of Ithamar, and the son of Aaron the priest. All who were numbered of the Levites, whom Moses, Aaron, and the leaders of Israel numbered, by their families and by their fathers' houses, from thirty years old and above even to fifty years old, everyone who came to do the work of service and the work of bearing burdens in the tabernacle of meeting, those who were numbered were 8,580. According to the commandment of the Lord, the Levites were numbered by the hand of Moses. Each according to his service and according to his task, so, were they numbered by him, as the Lord commanded Moses. When Moses had finished setting up the tabernacle, he anointed it and consecrated it and all its furnishings, and the altar and all its utensils. Then the leaders of Israel, the heads of their fathers' houses, who were the leaders of the tribes and over those who were numbered, made an offering. They brought their offering before the Lord, covered carts, oxen, a cart for every two of the leaders, and for each one an ox, and they presented them before the tabernacle. The Lord told Moses to accept the offerings from them, that they may be used in doing the work of the tabernacle of meeting, and he was to give them to the Levites, to every man according to his service. Therefore, Moses took the carts and the oxen, and gave them to the sons of Gershon and to the sons of Merari, according to their service under the authority of Ithamar the son of Aaron the priest. However, to the sons of Kohat he gave none, because theirs was the service of the holy things, which they carried on their shoulders. The Lord then commanded Moses to number all the firstborn males of the children of Israel from a month old and above and take the number of their names. The Levites were taken for the Lord instead of all the firstborn among the children of Israel, and the livestock of the Levites instead of all the firstborn among the children of Israel, as the Lord commanded him. All the firstborn males, according to the number of names from a month old and above, of those who were numbered of them, were 22,273. The Levites were taken instead of all the firstborn among the children of Israel, and the livestock of the Levites instead of their livestock, the Levites were to be the Lord's. Moses finished setting up the tabernacle and he anointed it and consecrated it and all its furnishings, and the altar and all its utensils. On this day that it was raised up, the cloud covered the tabernacle, the tent of the testimony, and from evening until morning, it was above the tabernacle like the appearance of fire. The tabernacle was always covered by the cloud by day, and the appearance of fire by night. When the cloud was taken up from above the tabernacle, after that, the children of Israel would journey, and in the place where the cloud settled, there the Israelites would pitch their tents. It was at the command of the Lord when the children of Israel would journey, and at his command when the Israelites would pitch their tents. Now as long as the cloud stayed above the tabernacle, they remained encamped. Even if the cloud remained many days or a few days, two days, a month, or a year that the cloud remain encamped and not journey, 
according to the command of the Lord they would remain encamped and according to the Lord's command they would journey. The Lord also commanded Moses to make two silver trumpets to be used for calling the congregation and for directing the movement of the camps. When both trumpets were blown, all the congregation would gather before Moses at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. However, if they blew only one trumpet, then the leaders, the heads of the divisions of Israel were to gather to him. When he sounds the advance, the camp that was on the east side would begin their journey. When he sounds the advance the second time, the camps that were on the south side would begin their journey, they sounded the call for them to begin their journeys. Also, when the Israelites would go to war in the land against the enemy, the sound of an alarm with the trumpets would be blown and they would be remembered before the Lord God and would be saved from their enemies. The trumpet was also blown at the appointed feasts, and the beginning of months and over their burnt offerings, sacrifices of peace offerings, and this was to be a memorial for them before God. Thanks for listening. If this video was a blessing to you, please like, subscribe, and share. Thanks.